Hi, and today in Photoshop I'm going to show you how to get rid of the background, make the background transparent, isolate an object, whatever you've punched into YouTube, I'm going to basically show you how to get rid of this background. So I'm going to show you four different techniques, some more effective than others and some with better results than others. So I've just imported this simple image and the first thing we're going to do is just simply make a copy. So drag that down to the plus icon and now we've made a copy layer. I'm going to switch the background off. Now the first technique I'm going to use is the brush tool. So the first thing we're going to do is stick a layer mask on here. So go down to this icon here and click. And then we're going to use our brush. So go over and click on the brush tool and make sure our brush is on black because of course black will hide. So when I grab my brush you can see I can begin to eliminate that background. So if I make my brush really big I can just move over that background and start to get rid of it. Now as you can see, we move over here, we have started to create this layer mask. If I just hit the Alt key and click on the layer mask, you can see the black has hidden the background and the white has revealed the strawberry. Let's just go back. So what I need to do now is reduce the size of my brush and then begin to go around these edges. Now you can go around these edges as carefully as you like or you can just roughly go around them. It's completely up to you. Now this is quite a long-winded way to go about doing it. It's fairly accurate depending on how good you are with your mouse or with your pen, whatever you're using. So all I'm going to do now is speed up the video and just go around the rest of this strawberry and show you at the end the results. Now, as you can see, as I've gone around this strawberry, I've adjusted the hardness of my brush. So at the moment, my hardness is 46, and that just refers to how blurry the edges are of my brush. Now, that's really effective when going around certain parts of this strawberry, because as you can see here, the edges here are quite sharp, but obviously when we went around the leaves, those edges, just go back, the edges around the leaves were actually quite blurry so I was able to go around with a much softer edge brush so to, as to match the focus of these leaves. Now of course you can go back and readjust anything you've missed or that doesn't look right and don't forget you can change your brush from black to white so let's say for example you've done this you can either go back command control Z or of course you can go back change your brush to white and then go back and fill that in. Okay, so that's the first technique and at the end of the video I'll show you how to save all of these as a So I'm just going to unlock my background, I'm going to duplicate my background and then just get rid of that example. Okay, so the next way to do this is to use the quick selection tool. So that's this tool here. And depending on how big or small you make your brush, so I'm using the Alt Option or Control key and pressing them down together and moving my mouse left to right to increase and decrease the size of my brush. Obviously, alternatively, you can go up to here and use the sliders here, and they will again increase the size of your brush or the hardness. So depending on what size you've got your brush will depend on how much detail will be picked up. So I'm going to start off with this brush size here. I'm just going to click and drag over this strawberry. Now what Photoshop will do is try to identify the edges between colour and contrast. So as I drag this over here you can see the marching ants are going to the edges. Now this is a smaller piece here so I'm going to reduce the size of my brush is to go to the edges. 
Now if we just zoom in we can see that it's done an okay job but it hasn't really picked everything up. So as you can see I've got to go round like this and try to fill in the gaps. Now the thing that it's not very good at doing is really cutting out areas where it's quite blurry because as you can see here it's going to pick up quite a sharp edge and there's not much contrast between these two colours when it fades out. It's almost blended. So if you want to go back at the moment this brush is on plus but if I've picked up too much hit the alt key and it will go to a minus and that will take away those elements that you don't want. So at the moment I'm just including all these bits into the selection, just taking away a bit. And as you can see I've got to continuously go around deleting and including elements of the strawberry. So let's just press the Alt key, try to get it to eliminate things. Okay, so let's just say that's what you've done and you hit the mask tool here and let's just have a look at that selection. So it's okay, it was very quick, but the downside to it is it's not overly accurate and again you've got to go around and maybe fix a few elements here, which is perfectly fine, we just use this exactly the same technique. Grab your brush tool, make sure you're on black and then just go along and refine those edges. Okay, that's the next technique. And as you can see, if I hit my move tool here, then I can move that strawberry around. Ah, right, now what we've seen here is that the selection tool didn't pick up this bit in the middle. So if we hit the Alt key and the mask, you can see here we have a black spot. So all we need to do is grab our paintbrush, go to white, and just simply paint over the top. And then hit the Alt key again, and there it's returned. So now if I hit my Move tool, go up to here or press V, and now you can see that that is a shape that's been isolated and the background has been deleted. Okay, so that's technique number two. So the next technique would be the Magnetic Lasso tool. And this tool is very good if you've got a very different coloured background. It's a bit like the quick selection. It tries to magnify. If I just click and start to drag around my object, it picks up that difference in contrast and colour. And it will pull the line, pull your selection to that line. And again, we just release and continue to go around. The thing about this one is you can release the mouse if it's not quite picking up the elements that you want to. So here for example, it may not it's not picking up that top bit. So I can release the mouse at the top and then start again from that point. And again, didn't pick up that corner, so I have to go back and refine that. I'm moving my page round by hitting my Spacebar, see it doesn't like it there, so I release my mouse, continue on again, release my mouse, release my mouse. Again, it's struggling with these leaves because of the contrast, it's quite blurry, the edges, so it is struggling a bit, which is why it's better that this is for really objects that have very sharp edges. No, it didn't like that corner. And then again, it wants to pick up this shadow, so we'll have to go back and refine that. And then work our way around to the beginning. Once you hit the beginning, it will make a selection for you. And again, if we just hit the mask icon, and we can see how that's worked out. Again, it's okay, it's very quick, but again, with the leaves, it has struggled to go around the outside. And again, we'd have to go back 
and refine all this edging here. But again, if your selection is very simple, it's like a box or a bottle or something, very sharp edges, this may work a treat. Okay, so let's just move that one down. And now onto the final tool I'm going to show you, which is the pen tool. Lots of people have a real love-hate relationship with this tool, but once you master it, I guarantee you'll never go back to using anything else. So I've hit the P key on my keyboard or selected the pen tool from here. And all I'm going to do now, if you want these spiky bits out here, you can go back and just include those very quickly at the end. But I'm going to eliminate them for now because otherwise this tutorial will be very long. So all we do is just click and then click and drag to make a curve. And you'll see there are these two handles. Now I'm not going to go into massive detail about the pen tool because there are so many tutorials on, on how to do it. So I'll just go over some of the basic principles. If you hit the command or control key and just select this middle point, you can move it. And you can see as I move it, that curve changes. And the idea is to get these blue lines onto the edge as much as possible. And again, you can spend hours going over in detail or you can simply whiz across. So for example, I can go all the way up here I obviously need a little point in here where I can just go around the edge here and I can pull and push like that again using the command or control key. Now if you do want to adjust these handles, hit the alt key and then you can adjust each handle. And then I can adjust this one as well. Now the ends of the handles are circles and the actual points are squares. So if we roughly go around each one, just click and drag as you go around to try to accurately pick up as much of these edges as possible. So I'm going to go around the rest of this strawberry and then come back at the end and show you how to complete it and refine it. Now, just before you close this selection off, I find it's really useful just to make the last mark just before the end. So just about here, let's go to there. Then you can just adjust that final curve without making the selection. Let's just pull that point up a bit. And then close the selection as you hover over that first point, you'll see that the pen tool has a small circle next to it, just click. And now you have completed that selection. Now the next step is to right click, go down to make selection. And here you have a variety of different options. So first of all, you can feather this option. If you have naught pixels, it means that this selection is going to be really really sharp and for some people that's perhaps what you want but you can see here that it's not completely sharp particularly over this aspect here so I'm going to feather this by 1.5 pixels and this is a new selection and I'll come back to how to use these add and subtract selections in a second for this small portion here and then just click OK. Once you've made that selection and you've spent an awful lot of time making that selection, I often will save it just in case something goes wrong. So go to select, go down to save selection, and I'm just going to name it strawberry. And then click OK. Now that means that for whatever reason, if you really mess this up, then you can simply go back up to select, go to load selection, Click on the drop down and you can see here you've got your selection and click OK. I'll just cancel that for now. Now before we do anything with this selection, I'm going to go in and use the pen tool to select out this portion here. So if I just zoom in, I'll just make a quick selection with the pen tool. Now, because we've already got the selection going around the outside, 
we actually want to eliminate this one from the selection. So place the pen tool inside this selection, right click, go down to make selection, make sure you've feathered it to whatever you want and go down to subtract from selection. Now, if this portion was an addition to this original selection, you'd select add to selection. So let's click subtract and click OK. And now you can see that it's eliminated this element here. Again, go up to select, save selection, and you can name this strawberry two. So now you've got that selection, you can go down to your mask tool and click. And again we can go in and just have a look at this mask. And as you can see it's almost perfect, we could go around the edges again if we wanted to just to define some more, but actually with these edges being so soft, actually that's, that's pretty good. Okay, and again, you can now move this round as you see fit. So now we've made all our different selections, you can see the different results. Now what you need to do is to go and save this as a PNG file. Now, a PNG file means that although this is the, your canvas size, the only thing that will appear when you import this image to something else, which is a document or back into Photoshop or online, only the strawberry will appear. So all this black and white checkerboard behind will be transparent. So go up to file and you can go to export or you can go to save as or save, it doesn't matter, so let's go to save. And the first thing to do is to go down to format. Click on the drop down, go down and select PNG. So that's the first and most important thing to do. The second thing is you can name this whatever you want to and again save this wherever you want and then just go ahead and click save. You can choose what size file you have, it's completely up to you depending on where you're going to insert the particular image, just click OK. And then if I was to insert a new layer, and let's just say I got rid of all of these on here, and then go to file, open, Go to my PNG file that I've just saved, click open, and there we have that strawberry with a transparent background. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.